Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Best start to yep. an episode ever. <laughs> I was loading up a uh, website to uh, discuss something, and it uh, started playing an ad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it was like, like music too. It's like I pulled it up, and you're like three, two, one. All of a sudden, it's like did 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 did. Oh, well, I'm leaving all of that in, so because that's just too good not to. Uh, so, got a question for you. I'm trying to think which one to start with. I don't know. I don't know if you saw my tweet today. We'll start with that one. No, I haven't it. seen anything. So I. I'm not kidding you. Last night was the first night. Like we had some problems with the kids last night. They were going, both of them were going crazy. Like Jack wouldn't go to sleep for the life of him. He was just kicking and screaming and crying for like hours. It was insane. I don't know what happened. He has never like really been that bad before. Was he vocalizing but, anything or was he just. It was vocalizing. Person. He wanted to go downstairs. He okay. wanted to go downstairs. Wanted to go downstairs. Like okay. it was, that was it. It was. So there was no reason. It was just he wanted to go downstairs. I think it was good. Like he was overly tired. And for some reason, he decided to like really lash out. But so we finally get him to sleep. And in the middle of trying to get him to sleep, though, the other, you know, the the other kid starts, you know, crying mercilessly. So I'm trading on and off with, you know, the wife, because like we neither of them we can make happy at this point. (laughs) And uh, finally, it's probably like. 10.30 or so, they both get settled down to where we're like, ha, relax, you know. And it was, okay, 10.30. It's Wednesday night. Okay, there's an episode of Survivor to watch. Yeah. I didn't realize it was the finale. I was about to say, it was the finale last night. So it's two hours plus the reunion show. And granted, I don't watch the reunion show, but they don't usually announce the winner until sometime into the, you know, the reunion. So lately, I don't know how much you've been paying attention because you don't watch it until long after the fact uh, that it's like out. Mm -hmm. But usually the reunion, it'll be a two hour episode. The reunion show starts, but the reunion show is really still Mm -hmm. mostly starts with it's finishing the tribal council. Still the final tribal council. And then they go into voting. So it's really like half an hour into the reunion show, even though it's really only, you know, it's not into the reunion show, but it's like half an hour into that segment that you finally get to find out who wins. So I'm like, I do not like it's 1030. I can't do two and a half hours of, you know, Mm -hmm. of watching survivor right now. (laughs) Okay, we'll watch it tomorrow, which granted, I haven't finished it yet. Um, <laughs> got busy doing other things. I was going to watch it today, but we haven't gotten there yet. So I shit you not. I go to work. I'm Spoiled. at one point. I turn on news.google.com. You knew better. You This has happened for, so, so many times, I, Jeff. I know, but it's, it's it happened so many times to the point where, for one, I wasn't thinking about it because I didn't think about the fact that the finale was last night, but it's also never been this bad where the, the headline spoiled, not just the winner, but everything else about the finale that I wanted to see all in one small headline. They Jeez. basically put in as much shitty spoiler information as they possibly could into this one headline. And it, it's over. Wow. It's like the whole twist that's in this season, as well as the winner of the season, was completely ruined in like three seconds. Nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> that really sucks. I'm, I'm very, very, very furious. I mean, granted, last time I had a major spoiler, it was before I'd even watched any episodes in the season. Right. So at least I don't know. The whole you know at least I got every other episode except the finale. You know, right. but this time it's, it's still it's like two and a half hours of absolutely ruined, you know, survivor watching because there's absolutely zero surprises for me anymore. And in this and it's like episode that has people have been saying is like one of the greatest finales in all, of all times. Really? Did you think it was? And well, so far, I've, I haven't finished it all yet, but I will I will tell you that where I'm my mind is going with it, especially knowing what happens at the end. No, I feel like but, they, they did that last year's season too. greatest season of all time. Well, but the thing is, so it's, it's kind of weird because, yeah, granted, it was a news article that because, of course, once I got the spoiler, I was like, OK, I can now I didn't read information about 
the um, this particular episode because I don't want to ruin it. But there was like an article that actually caught my eye in the related section of this one that said like survivor winners and how they've like wasted their money and i was like "Ooh, i'm gonna read through this one so yeah. and of course it talked about spoilers from last night still in the middle of it anyway i mean that's the one that talked about how you know, as the season just ended and fans are saying you know greatest season ever like so i don't know about that one but last time you said people like justin were telling you how great it was like it was people everyone was talking about like how they couldn't wait to watch survivor because it'd been the best season of all time and all this and then i got finally got around to watch it and i was like eh, it was You're a like, season right. yeah another season and, and honestly the, there's a big twist in this one that you know i i want you to watch it because i'd love to talk to you about it because especially knowing what happens at the end and uh, watching it you know going through so far i'm so curious on some of your thoughts on the way that they did this particular uh, twist. So uh -huh. when you actually do get around to watching it at some point, we do need to dedicate an episode to uh, talking about this season and, and your thoughts on it. But it's, uh, it's just so hmm. angering, though, that like, why is that even <laughs> appropriate journalism? Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild that uh, this has happened frequently to you. So this ravine that I'm beside goes into the, the water... Um, the water cave and it also goes right to where you dug to me oh well i guess that may, it would make sense for that water cave to go there yeah i just got to a random staircase but the cool thing is i i can just leave now because right here's my, <laughs> my little door and everything see you buddy <laughs> um i do want to uh, find diamonds though so i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit of branch mining i guess and see if i can uh, get lucky my yeah, my problem is I'm going up, so I'm not even close to yeah. diamonds at this point. I'm at the diamond. Oh, level. I got to I got to outside. Wow, I didn't even realize that I was outside. I I, I came across our skeleton spawner. <laughs> is it 17 or 13 you want to be at when you're branch mining? It's 13, isn't it? I don't know. Somewhere <laughs> in diamond level. Yeah, I think it's 13. Is there a difference between 17 and 13? I don't even know. Uh, one of whichever the the correct <laughs> answer <laughs> is 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 the level that lava spawns at. So you should not hit it head on. You should hit it at your feet. Oh well, my guess would be 17 then, right? I don't know. That's because the... 13 is lower than 17. So <laughs> 60 just, is the I'm correct saying, answer because 17 is lower I'm... than 60. I'm using logic here. You're, you're saying that it's got to be the level above where lava spawns. Is it 17 or 13? Uh, you know, 13. Be, but no, no, your your answer is not very good. It's very good. It's the worst answer ever. Oh, silverfish. This is the worst thing ever, actually. This creeper has like, he fell down a hole to come kill me. You really want me dead? Yeah, I had a creeper. Yes. Almost hit me. So, the other thing I want to get your take on here <laughs> is what do you. Oh, God damn, I keep trying to jump and I'm like not running. So, I'm. I try to jump over this like gap and you need to run to do it. And I'm just like, oh, I didn't run enough. And I just fall straight down. Uh, what would you think of a hotel that was based on food? Based on what? Food. What do you mean? Like you're, 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 a, you're a chef at heart. Would you spend extra money to go to like a hotel that was like making the hotel experience based around like it's like a dining experience cuisine? Sure, yes. that exists. That's a thing. I, sure, I'm asking your your thought on it. Yeah, those are cool. I mean, and it's kind of like a bed spend... and breakfast, right? Uh, I think a bed and breakfast is more like. A quaint, romantic thing that that's not really revolving around food. It just mm. happens to have breakfast served to you. No, the no. the The food aspect of the bed and breast breakfast is an important aspect. Uh, define important. I mean, it, yeah, it's part You're, of the name. You, ha you have to have. It's breakfast. not no yet, yeah, mm -hmm. but most bed and breakfasts. It's not just like, hey, we're gonna have some cereal and some waffles. It's like you can you know expect this 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 eloquent cu cuisine not just for breakfast like you know at, at night we'll be serving this and um a lot of bed well, not, not every bed and night breakfast. are you eating breakfast at night you eat you, they they have meals available all the time it's not just breakfast 
Are you sure? Uh huh. I'm not so sure about this. Have you ever been to a bed, bed and breakfast? Bed and breakfast. Have I you have ever? Not, but, okay. but, I but have. bed and breakfast to, to me implies I always thought it was a place that you stayed in in the morning. You got breakfast. Huh. Like you had maybe a home cooked breakfast or something along that line, but I did not think there was any lunch or dinner involved. And Mitch Hedberg even said he wants to go start next to a bed and breakfast, a, a, a lunch table dinner, a um, lunch chair dinner. That's what he called it. <laughs> Instead I of mean, a bed and every breakfast, one of a lunch them is chair dinner. Different, and they're all themed different and all this. But uh, yeah, one of the ones I went to, um, like they have activities all the time. Like there's there's a there's there's snack at this this hour with tea. Um, there's there's a dinner. There's a lunch. The Were they always like in a England. <laughs> No crumpets over there too. You can have tea without being in England. I mean, you can. I don't know why you would. Jesus Christ! Um, but sure, you can. <laughs> I mean, you can eat a bratwurst not in Germany too. But actually, I love bratwurst. So, um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, bread. Bed and breakfasts are like overly themed the rooms are themed everything is themed no i do not i do not agree with you that your average bed and breakfast is themed around the food not around the food but themed in some way they're they're not just they're not just a place that you go to sleep um no they go a place you go to sleep and, and no they're not just a place you go to sleep and expect breakfast that's like every hotel with continental breakfast is what you're describing so every hotel's a bed and breakfast that's I mean in, in by your definition this is true. Um, no, not necessarily. That hotels just learn that bed and breakfast have a good thing going for them and they copied it, you know, and no, no fault in that. And bed and breakfasts are like these things that they're basically a hobby thing. It's a thing that people that don't know what to do with their time make a bed and breakfast. It's totally a hobby. It's a hobby for retired women and men. But that almost doesn't make any sense because you're saying that the bed and breakfast is like food is a big aspect of it. So you're saying that anybody can just have a hobby where a major aspect of it is food and be fine. What now? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. You said a big part of the bed and breakfast is around the food, surrounds the food. A lot of them, not every bed and breakfast, but a lot of them. And even <coughs> the the ones that, that it isn't their focus, the breakfast does have to be unique. It's not just like, I don't know. It's not just like, all right, here's, here's, like I said, like a continental breakfast, like here's a, a tray of food. Like it's, they're, 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 every bed and breakfast that I've ever considered, I mean, and maybe this is because this is who I am, but every bed and breakfast I've ever considered going to, food is a major aspect of, of the decision pro making process. Hmm. I'm, I'm just curious because I, I how, how accurate your take on this bed and breakfast thing is because I've never thought of a bed and breakfast as being tailored around food or necessarily themed. I thought pretty much all bed and breakfasts were like a cottage theme. No, most of them, every bed and breakfast, I've stated a couple too, by the way. Um, the the rooms. Two? No. So all two? Okay, of them? okay. I've, sa I've saved at several, a few, many, more than two. I think five, five is probably an accurate number. Um, okay. Every one of them that I've stayed at, uh, each room has its own theme. And you pick which room you want, and like the cost is different. They have different sized beds and stuff in each room, but they all have a theme. What, the what theme did you go for? Uh, it depended on which the woman I was with. <laughs> this one was the Dirty Hooker theme. Yep, I went with the Dirty <laughs> Hooker theme twice. <laughs> Those were the best bread and breakfasts. So... The reason I really asked this question, not to get onto a bed and breakfast, but so do you think it was worth it, I guess, for the food aspect? I don't like bed and breakfasts. <laughs> Why did you go so many times? Because women. Women like bed and breakfasts. <laughs> like, they don't want to just go to this, to this town and stay in a hotel. They Let's go to a bed and breakfast. It's like, well, if I'm gonna pick a bed and breakfast, I'm at least gonna have one that's got some some, some good things about it. So the food is important. But I'll tell you, the reason why I don't like bed and breakfasts is because the people that create them need your attention. They're in need of attention. They have this hobby. It's not a business. It's a damn hobby. I don't care what they say. 
and they are there to be your friend. And it's it's not you can't just go to a bed and breakfast and stay and then leave. That's not how this works. Well, you you go, gotta go and eat breakfast. And no, you're gonna go and you're 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 supposed to interact with the other guests. Um you're supposed to attend the events, uh, and you don't the have events? to. Yeah, there's always, like I said, there's always. Um, uh, don't d- don't miss movie time at eight, okay, guys? And if you need anything, just call. We're right downstairs, and we're gonna be stopping by later on with a little menu for six, just so you can know what's gonna be at the snacks. Snacks are at six. Movies at eight. That's what your bed and <laughs> breakfast is like. I uh, I've never. Stayed at a bed and breakfast, nor heard somebody describe one that way. That's before. exactly what it's like. It's like it's like you it's like you're going and staying at grandma's house. I mean, I guess that's works for people who like to stay with grandma. And the other get people who stay in bed and breakfasts are the kind of people that are like all right, I'm, I'll be at the wine tasting, and I cannot wait to meet Jim and Sally, and we're going to talk and talk and talk, and maybe we can plan our vacation next year. We can come to the same bed and breakfast. We'll keep, we'll keep, we'll keep in touch. <laughs> Facebook me. So kind of like a hostel for old people? It is hostile. <laughs> Not hostile. <laughs> uh but is that what you mean? It's like—is it like a hostel for old people? It's not like a hostel though, because a hostel is somewhere where it's cheap, like a cheap place to sleep, um, and that's not what it is. Because it's definitely not cheap. It's far from cheap. It's the pro- most expensive place you'll ever stay, and the least amount of like well, alone time. Well, you gotta time. pay the extra money to get the to purchase the movies and the snacks. Right? Yeah. No, I mean that's, the that's wine, it's the wine for the wine taste. Like you don't have to do all these things. You don't have to visit the the fucking cha cha hour and the margarita minute and all the other shit they're gonna fucking do to you. But they're they the margarita minute. Good <laughs> lord, those people know how to drink. The, the century club. <laughs> it's all just a drinking themed bread bed and breakfast. Is like every couple hours. It's like those probably and this exist. ninety minutes we'll be doing century club or this hundred minutes we're doing century club. Right after that, it's the margarita minute. <laughs> Followed by uh, shots of wine. <laughs> Why? Because nobody else takes wine by the shots. Um. So oh, I, I just bed found and, a um, at bedandbreakfast.com. There's a first timers guide to bed and breakfast etiquette. I'm curious what this says. Warm personalized service and mingling among guests are part of the appeal of bed and breakfast. See. Hospitality goes both ways. Depending on the property, you might be staying at someone's private home, sharing common rooms, and dining with fellow travelers. And sharing common rooms? Common rooms, like the library. You, you know. The, the, oh, 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 not like everybody in a room. Right, 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 right. Um, the common rooms. Uh, and dining with fellow travelers. A bed and breakfast at, at B&B's, as in life, communication and common courtesy are key. Um, what are some things you should... Things that guests should tell hosts in advance. Uh, bed and breakfast offers service amenities tailored to the needs of individual guests. Because policies can vary from end to end, it's crucial to communicate your needs and expectations before you stay. Tell your hosts about dietary restriction, food allergies, room preferences, and special requests, physical limitations. Um, ask your ask your innkeeper if you can expect any privacy or innkeeper. Any- yes, innkeeper, innkeeper. <laughs> If you can expect any privacy or, or if you expect to mingle with... Can I others. expect any privacy? That's what I'm telling you. It's not an expectation. <laughs> it's not an expectation. Bed and breakfast is not about privacy. It's about it's relinquishing... It's, your- now, it's, it's, now, it's now an activity. It's it not is. Even a the place. whole thing is a fucking activity. I'm telling you. Bed and breakfasting. <laughs> it is. It is. If you, you, if you go into a bed and breakfast expecting a bed and breakfast... Alone, you are going to have a bad time. What you should be going in to expect is meeting a lot of people and doing a lot of things that you don't get to plan. <laughs> it's quite comical to me, especially your take on it. This is, I'm, I mean, I'm reading you the damn guy that's telling you this. 
Um, so now it's making me wonder what. So I was more talking. I wasn't talking about bed and breakfast, but now I wonder if all these food themed hotels are bed and breakfast or not. And they just are calling themselves hotels. But if you say that, like, ignore the bed and breakfast part, the, the requirements of the mingling. Would you pay extra money, go somewhere that had a food themed hotel in some way, shape, or form? I mean, it, but it was a hotel. Yeah, I've done this, like in Charleston. Like, I've gone and stayed at a hotel that's specifically for their food. And the only way you can eat there is if you're a guest. And did you enjoy said experience? It was all right. The place was it's kind of outdated. The rooms were like $400 a night. And it was like made for like people that grew up in the 20s. Oh, it wasn't like the the place wasn't great. The food ended up being really good. Um, And we saw an OAR concert while we were there. So that part was okay too. But uh, so that's pretty cool. The place was like uh, it was way overpriced to be very not modern is the best way to describe it. It'd make a nice bed, okay. bed and breakfast. It'd make a nice bed and breakfast. Is it, uh, here's um, one of the questions. Is it rude to take breakfast or go to eat breakfast in your room? It depends on the property. Many B and B owners are happy to accommodate guests. However, it's expected that you're to mingle with the other guests. So not all ends uh, offer takeaway breakfast. <laughs> of uh, course, get in touch with your innkeeper first. Your innkeeper. That's such just a weird term to me for the bed and breakfast. Uh, the innkeeper. Um so let me ask you your thoughts on this new food themed Hotel, hotel and resort that's opening. Okay. Taco Bell is opening a taco themed hotel and resort. No, it's not. <laughs> what are your thoughts? No, it's not. Don't lie to me. <laughs> but it is. Where's this? Granted, I uh, let me try to get to the article. I'm in water right now. I can't. Uh... I also play my games while sitting in the bathtub. Uh, I mean, it's the best place for it. Um, let's see. It says, Taco Bell's opening a resort. Yes, this is really happening. Starting on August 9th, fans of the fast food chain can be looking to book a room at Taco Bell. Or at The Bell, a Taco Bell hotel and resort in Palm Springs, California. Here's the problem. Apparently it's getting... It's going to have several unique menu items that will only be available at the hotel, and it's only open for a limited time. Oh, that's cool. That part's cool. I like that part. Would you go? No. Oh, dude, I so... I, like, want to book you a can't, trip. You can't afford this. This is a high-end thing for sure. You think Taco Bell is a high-end thing? The, what you're talking about is... This shit is like the fire Festival of fucking tacos. Except it's not going to be as bad because it's probably got, you know, what real people it? working on so it's it. It's August 9th. How do you start? <laughs> I guarantee you this is not a cheap thing. It's not like I'm going to get a room for... <laughs> the comment section is hilarious on this news article. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see, see if it says anything about the price or any way you can look at it from check in to check out the bell at talk about hotel and the image is what a hotel stay can be unveiling a destination inspired by tacos and fueled by fans everything from guest rooms to breakfast and poolside cocktails will be infused with a taco bell twist i mean it's in palm springs this is not i guarantee you it is very expensive what let's pretend Taco Bell said, "Jeff Fagood, you're gonna we're gonna sponsor you to come out to our our taco themed resort." Uh huh. I'm sure you would go because why not? Why sure. why not take yeah. a free trip? But would you enjoy it? Are you somebody who goes, "Oh, Taco Bell, that's disgusting," or are you like, "I guarantee you, they're not hell. serving you stuff off of the Taco Bell menu." I, you want to go when we go and get the sponsor? Can we complain that we can't get like a gordita? <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> Be like I demand my gordita. Um. No, I guarantee you this is a thing that's very high end. It's all a very high end experience. It's targeted at rich kids. Um. Oh that, no. That can you know use mommy or daddy's credit over- card. In Palm Springs. Recording space. Oh, are we almost done? All right. We'll see you guys next time. We'll talk more about this then. Bye, everybody.